The next big one, PVP. I think everybody is excited, anxious, concerned, highly anticipating, nervous. You've talked about it a little bit here and there, but why don't you just take it from the top? How does it work? What's the deal with griefing? How are we going to be able to enjoy our Fallout game? Or how am I going to be able to screw up somebody else's Fallout game and get away with it? Or any variation on that. I'll just leave it to you to... This is why I don't go on Reddit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we will do our best to sort of explain where we're coming from with PvP. We agree with those. Like, we have folks in the office, we have that debate, you know, is it a... You know, what is it? Where do we want the, the, the players kind of um, driving force? Is it a, a PvE world thing? Is it the other players? And for us, it is both. How can, how can we do both? And so th the first thing I, we'd say is that we want this element of danger. And it sounds weird to say, without griefing, which is like, okay, those things are often in conflict. So right now, and you've seen it in some of the E3 videos, when you shoot somebody, you do a little bit of damage. You don't do mm -hmm. full damage. It's like an invitation. It's like like slapping somebody in a bar. <laughs> like I, you don't want to fight, um, uh, and like that's annoying. But eventually, you're like, yeah, I think you know yeah. we're gonna. And so you do little <laughs> bits of damage. If you engage, then you're doing full damage. And there's a cap reward based on the player's level. So if the player's really high level, you're gonna get more caps than them if they're low level. Um, if you want to, after each one of them dies, you can seek revenge which doubles the incentive. So the guy kills you, and you're like, well, that was annoying. Then the game says, hey, if you want to seek revenge, I'm going to give you the double reward. It's like, OK, maybe I want to engage in that. Um, and that's really, really fun. The issue is when you don't want to engage in it, right? Someone's coming right. up to you, and they're slapping you and slapping you and slapping you. Um, and you're like, I really don't want to deal with this right now. Um, we have a lot of ways you can get away from them, but we still like it where they do, if they keep going at it, they have the ability to kill you, which sounds terrible, it right? It does. To be like, like, why would you do that? Uh -huh. um, we like to turn that into a dramatic moment. So the player that kills somebody that didn't want to engage in it um, then becomes a wanted murderer. They get no reward. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the first applause of the panel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Murder! <laughs> um, <laughs> and so there is no reward. You get no caps. You get no XP. You get nothing for becoming a wanted murderer, except for the kind of social incentives people have online to be assholes. Right. Um, <laughs> which no. evidently, there's quite a few. Um, so uh. what do we do with that? We turn the assholes into interesting content. So they appear on. <laughs> They appear on your map as a red star. Everybody sees them, and they have a bounty on their head. That <laughs> <laughs> and that, that bounty comes out of their own caps. Oh. <laughs> and they can't see the other players so, <laughs> on, on the map. Um, and we did this, we had this idea, like, let's, let's turn it, like, like, let's make them interesting content, and it is, when this happens, when any, anybody murders somebody while we're playing in the office, everyone sees them on the map, and it is, like, they're, it's awesome. Like, Tell, yeah, that's one of my favorite yeah. stories there. So the other day we had a big a test, an internal test, and we had played for hours, and towards the end of the test, I had leveled up, I had actually started early, and so <laughs> I was higher level than a lot of the other people, and... I saw that red star, and I was, I was almost about to log off, and I was like, oh, now I'm going to get somebody. So I had built a sniper rifle, right? I found a, hunch, a hunting rifle on a super mutant, and I built a little scope, and I extended the barrel, and I was like, I finally get to use this. So I fast traveled near them. Now, on the map, remember, you see where they are. It's not super up. It's, it's a little relative, so it's not super pinpointy, but you'll know generally where they are. So I'm sneaking, sneaking, because when you sneak in our game, your, your appearance on the map disappears, no matter what state you're in, except for wanted. So I'm, my pip doesn't appear, and I'm sneaking, and I see him in the building, and I, and I see him moving around, and he comes wandering out, and I took his head off with my sniper rifle. Ah. And he drops down, I go running up, I loot his junk, I dance, took a picture over his corpse, and <laughs> logged off. <laughs> <laughs> So 
what happens when you die, though? What happens when someone kills you? Like, Chris, why don't you jump in? What, like, if somebody, if, if I decide to engage, or even if I don't engage, am I punished if I die, or, 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 or there's got to be something? Yeah, for, for a long time, we tried testing where there was no punishment at all. Um, and, there was, and that took all the sting out of death. People used it to their advantage to travel back to, to various points, and it, it didn't feel right. Um, but we didn't want to, to make it too punitive because we do expect people will die, um, and there's no save games like a single-player game. Um, so what happens when you die is uh, you just drop your junk. Um, and, and junk isn't, isn't worthless. You, you need junk to, to build things in your camp or to make better guns or to make better armor. Um, so what it does is it creates a loop um, where you go out and explore, you create some junk, and if you happen to die, that's, that's all you drop. You don't lose your, your awesome power armor or any of the guns that you've collected. But then you have to make a decision. Is it, was that enough junk uh, that I need to go back and get it? Um, or is that something I can live without? Um, and what, what people will do is they'll go back to their camp and they'll, they'll put their junk back in their stash, which is safe. Nobody can, can take things out of each other's stashes. And we've also seeded the world um, with stashes as well. So if you know where some of the stashes are, it's always a safe place to, to store the junk that you've collected. So just enough so it'll sting, a, a but little not bit enough of a sting. so that'll really deeply hurt you. And yourself. it's also a little bit of a reward for, right. for if you manage to kill somebody, there's usually something there with yeah, them. Nice. You know, the thing with junk is it's nothing that you can't just re-get by if you just keep playing. Like right. that's that pile of it. But if you just start exploring, you'll collect more. So it's sort of like, well, that was sunk time. Do I want to go back and get it? And it's... Right. That happens on PvP, so if you do kill somebody, their junk drops and you get to pick it up. You get the caps from them, right. you can take the junk, but um, yeah. But it's just a little grindy time and you got it back. If, if it's the junk. You know, we like it, we put it in, and yeah. it's just enough to make it where before you head into a dangerous area, bef before this, you would just run into a dangerous area, you don't really care, there's no penalty to death, it's like you just fast travel back. Um, and then once we did that, you, know, so you just stop a little bit like, well, don't want, don't want to take a moment and like, collect myself, store the junk before I head into danger. If anyone huh. remembers Fallout 4, screws are very valuable. So yeah. if you've got screws <laughs> in your junk, you want to store them. Yeah. You and can't decide between like yeah. this awesome looking gun or a desk fan. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they both have equal. <laughs> How does respawning work, by the way? If you, if you, if you die in a, in a dangerous area, but can you respawn anywhere? What, what goes on there? Um, respawning always takes... Uh, you can respawn anywhere you've unlocked, just like Fallout 4. You can fast travel wherever you'd like. Um, the closest point to you is free, and the entrance to Vault 76 is free. Beyond that, um, you have to pay caps based on how far away it is from you. So if you decide you want to take that opportunity to go way far to a corner of the map, you're going to pay a small caps cost. You know, thinking of the vault, going back to PvP, it doesn't kick in until level 5. So that gets people into the game a little bit and, and understanding it before people start saying, hey, do you want to fight, do you want to fight? Because otherwise, they just hang out everywhere. Because people, everyone comes out of the vault. So right. you would just like set up your camp and all the turrets. That happened for a while. You're like, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm really excited. I got the game. <laughs> Remember, for, for people who have more questions on PvP and can already see some exploits that might not be fun, we do allow you to ignore and block players too. So you can actually, when you die, or at any time, honestly, but especially when you die, we have an option there for if you're just done with that, you can ignore them for that session. Then they can't see you on the map. They, they, can't, they, they won't be able to still mess with you, generally, unless they, unless they can find you. But this is a very big game. It's very hard to find people unless you know exactly where they are. You can fast travel easily. We also are entering a pacifist flag, so your bullets won't do that slap to people. So you don't have to worry about, I'm fighting something, some idiot jumped in front of my bullets and tried to get me in PvP. We're, yeah. we're allowing you to turn that off, too. People were uh, <laughs> abusing that in the studio. Yeah, the, the pacifist flag. Well, no, they would no. wait till you go to shoot a creature and they would jump in front of the bullet. Right. Yeah. We, uh, we, yeah, <laughs> we, we, uh, we had our QA team, I asked the QA team, several hundred people during one of our sessions to be the biggest assholes they can one session. We got a lot of good notes out of that, of things we need to fix. <laughs> QA knows yeah. how to play the game. Yeah, they, they oh, know well. how to play the game. I do have one more question about PvP, which is uh, if you are a higher level character with higher level... Uh, armor, higher level weaponry, how, how do I even have a chance? And I get the slap mechanic, but if I want to engage and I'm a lower level character, am I just going to get destroyed instantly? We did. We struggled with that. So what we've done is there's two sort of power curves. You have the usual power curve against creatures in the world that you're used to 
um, in our games. And then, so if you take a power curve from like low damage to high damage, in PvP, we normalize it, okay? So the, like just a knife is gonna come up in damage and the really powerful things are gonna come down. So they feel right, but the death in PvP is, is quicker and it works the same for armor. Um, so if you play other multiplayer games, the guy in power armor with a minigun is obviously gonna be harder, right. but if you get the drop on him with a knife, it, it does kind of work. Um, and it, it, it makes it more fun without it being, well, I have no chance whatsoever. Again, there's still a ramp there, it's just, you know, right. normalized. Cool. Nukes. And you get the caps, oh. right? So that's the other thing, is right. it, do I, why do I wanna go try to kill a level 100 person in power armor with my, when I'm low level, is that my reward is gonna be way higher. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Nukes. Very cool. <laughs> it's a little feature. <laughs> But what happens when we're nuked? I mean, we know that things happen. We know that the, the area gets irradiated. Things are destroyed. There's uh, higher level loot, higher level enemies. But let's say I have a camp in, in that area. What happens to my camp? Uh, how soon can I rebuild it? Uh, we, Chris, um, why don't you jump in? Yeah, we, well, first of all, nukes are very cool. All right? they're, they're one of the coolest things that happen in the game. Yeah. Um, but we, we don't want it to be overly burdensome to a player um, to lose all their, all their stuff, so that we don't. Um, when, when you nuke a, a camp, it does destroy the structures, but we've created something called a, a blueprint system, um, so that if you spend you know, hours uh, making a really cool house with lots of detail, um, you can blueprint that house. Um, so it's very easy to replace it in the event that it, it gets destroyed uh, by a nuke. Um, it also makes it very easy to move your camp. So even if we're not talking about destruction with, with nukes, if you decide you want to relocate your camp to a different part of the map, and you can pack it all up and you can put it somewhere. And of course, the terrain is going to be different, but because you've blueprinted uh, your house, then you can usually find a way to, to, to jimmy it so that it looks good right. when you're replacing it. So it's, it's very easy to get back to where you were. So you, the, other, the other thing with yeah, that right. is that the camp destruction part is really, it, it's easy to repair it if you want to leave it where it was, but we did, the, the camp destruction exists, it's not really for like, hey, go blow someone's camp up. We realize when we put it in that that is a griefing mechanic, is like someone wanders by and then you build a camp and you like imprison them. Now they have no <laughs> way to get out. Oh. So they need an ability to damage the walls just to get out of the prison you have built for them. <laughs> right. So it has less to do with, hey, we want other players to come and blow them up. Um, the camp is also good for PvP, where someone engages with you and you lure them back to your camp. There's Ashley Chang in the studio. Um, he, you can build uh, like musical instruments, and he's, he built his camp, and he's sitting in the middle of a road playing a tuba. Huh. And he's on this platform, he's like, burp, 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 burp. and he had built all these turrets in the foliage you can't see. And everyone's just like, this guy in a tuba. Like, <laughs> and then the turrets go, and he's just like killing everybody. He's like, burp, 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 the whole time. It's awesome. Um, 